terrible. Terrible. That's why I wear waterproof makeup. Good morning, everyone. My name is John Hudson. I'm the pastor here at Pilgrim Church, United Church of Christ at 25 South Main Street in Sherburn, Massachusetts, and it's with a spirit of deep thanksgiving and joy that I welcome you here today, those who are here in the sanctuary, those who are watching at home and those who will watch this service later in the week on YouTube or on Facebook. So I have to tell you, it's been a long time since there's been that much noise in church. <laughs> so it's a, it's a beautiful noise. It's a beautiful noise, and we're grateful that all of you are here today, and we're in particular grateful that this is the day that the young people and some of the adults tell the story. Because in some ways, um, I really think that the story of Jesus' birth belongs to kids and children. Uh, it's a way for them to enter into the gospel that is understandable and clear and, uh, and simple and beautiful. Everybody gets a birth. Everybody understands a little baby who needs to get taken care of by a mom and dad. Everybody understands how scary it can be at night and how you need a nightlight like a big star in the sky. And so I invite you all to enter into the story today. And um, just to let you know, um, our services next Saturday night are at 4 p.m. And we call that service for the young and the young at heart. And so that's for the uh, it's for everybody, but in particular, it's focused on young families um, and kids, so you can get home with plenty of time to spare for the evening. And then at night, we have a 10 o'clock service of lessons and carols, which is, I'm biased, but it's absolutely beautiful. Basically, we hear the scripture, we sing hymns, we hear the bells, we hear the choirs. It's, it's an absolutely beautiful service, and so I would invite you to participate in that as well. And then the only other... Um, Announcements that I have are at 5.15 today, the middle school youth group that myself and Eric Brooks lead is going to have their Christmas party in Yankee Swap, and so we'd love to have them all there, remind them to bring a wrapped gift worth $5 or less, um, and uh, just to kind of wrap up our at least 2022 year as the middle school youth group. And, um, and for the tableau today, I'm going to say this again, but if you brought uh, uh, your son or daughter here this morning and they want to be in the tableau. We want them in the tableau. If they weren't here last week, don't worry about it. Bring them downstairs, and we'll figure it out. The more, the merrier. And so this day, <clears throat> to remind us that we're in community with each other, that God calls us and makes us not to be solo, but to be in relationship, I'd invite you to turn to your left, right, back, or front, and to your comfort level, greet each other with a sign of God's peace.
Friends, our opening uh, hymn, which is entitled, Let Us Now Remember Joseph, can be found on the insert in your bulletin. Please be seated. Each week is a way of symbolically moving towards the 25th, towards actually the waning light, but towards the light of the world. We light a different Advent candle each week, and we have a different theme. And so we have studied and thought of hope and peace and joy, and this week we speak of love and the fourth Advent candle. And with that, I'd like to invite the Madison family to come forward and share with us the lighting of the fourth Advent candle. Isaiah said that the Lord spoke to the king and said, Ask a sign of the Lord, your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But when the king refused, God would not be stopped. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, 
the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. God wants us to know, even when we aren't sure of ourselves, God wants us to experience God's presence, even when we think we can handle life on our own. God sends us signs of God's presence with us. All we need to do is keep our eyes open and look. Look, the virgin <clears throat> shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but he had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. We light these candles, the candle of joyous hope, of proclaimed peace, of deep everlasting joy, and today a presence that speaks of love, as a sign that no matter our circumstance, we know we are not alone. So on this fourth Sunday of Advent, um, on, let's see, we're six days away from Christmas Eve and seven days away from Christmas, I want to offer us an opportunity to confess to God that we might be going a little bit too fast, or we might be trying to do a little bit too much, or we might be a little bit anxious about everything that lies ahead and I always say this, but on Sunday morning, I see people coming into church, and some people seem to be carrying really heavy emotional backpacks. It's one of the reasons we come to church, so we can let it go and leave it here and give it to God. So let's take a moment in the quiet of our hearts to think about maybe to move us well into Christmas, what we might need to let go of. It might be an unrealistic expectation. It might be a hurt it might be um, a much too long to-do list, but what do you need to let go of? So let's be in the quiet places of our hearts. Jesus, you tell us, uh, come unto me, all ye who are weary, and I will give you rest. And so, God, remind us in this week, sometimes of high anxiety, to let go of that, to give it over to you, to trust that you are in the midst of all of our celebrations, you are in the midst of all of our sadness, too. You are in the midst of everything, God. Help us to quiet our hearts, to listen to you, and to move towards Bethlehem with faithfulness and anticipation. All of these things we ask in the name of that, that small boy, that little baby, the one who was born in Bethlehem and grew up in Nazareth and became a great teacher. He who invites us all to pray together in one voice as a sign of our unity in him. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And at this time, I'd invite the young people to come forward for a special message before you go back downstairs. So who here likes stories? And how do stories often begin? What's the first phrase, everybody? Once upon a time. It's interesting, you know, that was first used to start a story something like 600 years ago. And it's because stories are really important to us. Um, and so we've been moving up to this Sunday when we tell the story of Jesus' birth. And we'll tell it again on Saturday night. But we need your help to tell the story. Are you willing to do that? Anybody here willing to be a shepherd or a star? Camel? No camels? Wise men? Okay. Angels? What, who am I missing? Okay. Star, okay. We just need you to do it. And so this is what I'd like you to do is to, no matter what happens today, is enjoy yourself. And then enjoy the story and enjoy the hymns. Enjoy your costume. And just know that you are giving us all a gift by telling that story. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. All right, so who hasn't put a star on the tree yet? <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to hand these out, and I ask all you guys to just put the stars on the trees to finish decorating it here. There, there and there. Here, take one. Watch out for the little kids. There. Thanks, Andy. Everybody got one? And then after you finish putting a star on the tree, you can go downstairs and follow um, Judy and Kay, who are in the back of the church, and Lindsay, who are in the purple robes. And then they'll be dismissed, and we'll move into the next part of our worship service. Okay, you ready? Can you go hang that on the tree? There you go. Not yet, Frank. They're just going to wait until these guys. Our scripture reading this morning is from the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. 
Uh, for those of you who would like to follow along on the Pew Bible, it can be found on page 783, the very first page of the Christian Testament. Uh, Matthew's purpose in writing was to establish through genealogy and through uh, stories and scripture, Jesus' roots in the Jewish religion. Um, and this chapter refers to the um, angel's appearance to Joseph uh, and resolution of Joseph's concerns regarding his and Mary's future. This morning's gospel. Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be pregnant from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to divorce her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. By the way, Jesus is a Greek version of the word of the name Joshua, and it means God saves. All this took place to fulfill, to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. From the prophet, the words, Look, the virgin shall become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from the sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife. But they had no marital relations until she had given birth to a son, and he named him Jesus. Thus ends the reading of this morning's gospel. Thank you, Frank. Let's be in a spirit of prayer together. Let us pray. Creator, this God, this morning we ask you to center us in you, in the story, in the music, in the holy days, in stillness and in peace. And just comfort us if we need comfort, comforting and inspire us if we need inspiring. And always, God, reminds us that in the person of Jesus Christ, you walk with us then, now, and always, and open our ears to hear that message. Amen. And again, from that text, Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose Mary to public disgrace, planned to divorce her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. We can all take good care of ourselves and we can do it all with independence, and we can all walk on our own under our own power, and we can all run up the stairs or down the stairs without hesitation, and we can take very good care of ourselves physically without help from anyone until the day, until the day, we cannot. We cannot. And then, like all humans at certain times, all humans eventually, we need help. We need support. We need someone to lean on. It happened at about mile 60 or so, mile 60 of an 82-mile bike ride. For the 13th year in a row, Pilgrim Church last August entered a team of riders in the Pan Mass Challenge, a 
charity fundraising bicycle ride across Massachusetts that raises funds for the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. Last summer, there were nearly 6,000 riders, and among them were our pilgrim folks, me and Steve Solomon and Roger Brown and Owen Searle. It was my first long, long distance ride since hip replacement surgery in June of 2020, and so I was excited and motivated after a spring and summer of training to prove to myself that I could get back in the saddle and I could cycle that far again, and of course, all under my own power and all on my own, that I could do it. I could do it. I could make it from Wellesley to Bourne. And that was true, and that was working out until I could not do it, at least not alone. I needed help and someone to lean on. Again, mile 60, my PMC teammate Steve and I hit the biggest hill of the day. Oh, I forgot to mention, it was about 100 degrees by mid-afternoon on that ride. The heat just rising up off the blacktop. It felt like we were all fried eggs that day, sizzling in the sun. And so I hit the hill, and I went to hit the gas, and then nothing, absolutely nothing. I had no strength left in my legs to push myself up the hill. I tried, and I tried, but to no avail. I was spent, kaput, seemingly done, and so I pulled my bike over, and Steve stopped with me, and he spoke encouraging words, and he made sure that I had enough water, and he stayed with me until a support van came along. Steve biked on to the rest stop, and we both promised to meet at the finish line in Bourne. He arriving by bike and me, theoretically, by bus. I was done. Or maybe not. I cooled off in the van's air conditioning as the drivers kindly sheltered me, and then they drove me to the next pit stop, and I drank two big bottles of cold water, and then I saw a nurse who took my blood pressure and cleared me, and then I found Steve at the pit stop. Right, Steve? And I said, we can do this. We can do this, we, a team, a pair on the journey together, and together we teammates, we made it those last 20 miles or so together. We rode as a pair, we encouraged each other, we waited for each other if one of us slowed down, we cheered each other on, we told corny jokes to distract ourselves from how sore and tired we were, anything to make it all the way, and then finally around 3.30 p.m. after being in the saddle since 5.30 a.m., we made it and we finished together. I could not have made it without you, Steve. Steve's in the back row, blue mask. I needed your support to make it. I needed to lean on you, and I did, and I got to the end of the journey, not solo, but together with you. Friends, we can do it all on our own, until the day and the time we cannot anymore. And then we all need someone to lean on for care, for love, for help, for guidance, for protection, for encouragement, for wisdom, for sure. I could not have done that ride without help, and that was humbling to admit, but friends, we all need one another. And as Christians, it is our job, it is our call, it is our duty, and it is our responsibility to help others to support others when they, for whatever reason, cannot make it alone in the ride of life. We cannot make it alone. Mary could not make it alone. Joseph could not make it alone. They needed one another for support, for love, for guidance, for encouragement. When I was getting the video ready for worship this week, I came across a most beautiful painting of Mary and Joseph making their way to Bethlehem. She on a donkey, he striding along next to her with a walking staff. Um, Doug, can you put up that image? It was created in 2020 by an illustrator named Mike Moyers, and he calls it simply the journey to Bethlehem. I love this picture, this imagined image of the Holy Family for one main reason. Now, look at it closely. And can you see how Mary, Mary, nine months pregnant, has placed her left hand on Joseph's right shoulder for support? For support as the donkey walks along and Joseph 
pushes into the hot desert wind. Can you see Mary's hand? Can you see that? For me, that one detail says it all about one of the truths of this story of Jesus' birth, the story that the children and youth and adults will be telling us soon. Mary needed Joseph, needed him so for support, to lean upon, to draw strength from, to encourage her, to remind her that with God, they both would make it. And Joseph needed Mary, Mary for support. Joseph might have faltered if not for Mary's touch on his shoulder, her encouragement, Mary's reminding him that she was there for him, and they were a pair and a team, and together they would make it all the way to Bethlehem, mutually, together. Friends, we can do it all on our own until we can't. And then we need the gift from God of someone to lean on for support. And then we need to be the one someone else leans on for support. We need to be Joseph. We need to be Mary. You and me. It's a long ride, my friends, in this life. Days when we might feel we just cannot make it. Days when the heat bears down or days when it is so cold or days when we get discouraged, or days when our bodies break down, or days when we need someone to help us on the road of life, or days when we are just human. And then we need another soul to stand and stride right next to us so we can extend our hand outward and place it on their shoulder and lean in and lean on them. Faith teaches us this simple, profound lesson daily. We need each other as fellow children of God, as neighbors, as family members, as church members and friends, as human beings in creation, our mutual outcomes are fully dependent upon our willingness to confess that I need you and that you need me and that we need each other. Can I get an amen for that? The essence of religion is that message. That's the core message of Jesus Christ, to love one another, and in loving one another, and supporting one another, and reaching out and leaning upon another person for help, we meet Jesus face to face. We channel God's love. Me to you, and you to me, and Mary to Joseph, and Joseph to Mary, and then further along, Mary and Joseph to Jesus, and then eventually Jesus to Mary and Joseph. We can all do it on our own. We can try and make this journey called human life under our own strength until we can't. And then God comes in. This is what the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said of our human dependence upon one another. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality and tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. In other words, I can't be who I am unless you also can become who God made you to be. And the only way this can happen is if we support each other. You know, this year, um, uh, I'm a big uh, music and song person, maybe you are, and we lost a really beautiful artist named Bill Withers. Does anyone remember Bill Withers? And probably his most well-known song This is what he sings. Sometimes in our lives, we all have pain. We all have sorrow. But if we are wise, we know that there's always tomorrow. Lean on me. When you're not strong, and I'll be your friend, and I'll help you carry on. Lean on me. Mary leaning on Joseph. Joseph leaning on Mary. I need you. You need me. We all need one another to live. Friends, that is why God made us, to love one another, to lean upon each other. Because we can all make it on our own until we cannot make it on our own. Thus, God calls us to love one another. Thank God for that. Let all God's interdependent people say, Amen.
them in our hearts. They're inside of us, but sometimes we just need to share those prayers outside uh, with the people who are with us um, to name names, to name um, events that are happening in the world that concern us, um, just to, to give thanks or to show concern. So are there any prayers, Deanna? So for Paula, who entered hospice this week, um, for a merciful and, and peaceful departure from this life to the next. Other joys or concerns this day. Judy. So just a prayer for in the, in the midst of all of the hubbub and the energy and the songs that are so awesome, prayers too for people who are just, they're not in that spiritual place. They miss someone, uh, maybe for the first year someone is not with them. Uh, maybe they don't have a lot of economic means and they see everything around them that says, you know, bye, 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 or, or maybe they're struggling with ill health or, or whatever. Um, just to pray for those people. And I would say to pray for them, and if they're a part of your life, to invite them to your table. Um, and to kind of make sure that they know that they're not alone. So thank you, Judy. Any other joys or concerns this day? Yes? I don't know when music was created, but uh, I'm very grateful for music. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So grateful for the... So grateful for the gift of music, and I, especially for me and for all of us, the sacred music of Christmas, too. So, um, yes, Frank. Prayers for our granddaughter, Edie, who is going through some serious health issues, uh, and for her immediate family, especially her mom, who is um, suffering the burden of those yeah. health issues along with her. So for Edie, a granddaughter who's struggling with some pretty big, big health stuff, but is uh, trying to move through that, and especially for her mom, who's kind of her main support. So, all right, I want to say a prayer for Phoebe Yasa, who's a member of our church, and that family's still trying to kind of figure out what's next for Phoebe. Um, and, um, and just a prayer of thanksgiving. Um, I, I said it before, but just that we have like all ages again. You know, some people say that we're returning to normal. I don't use that word anymore. What I like to say, and a colleague of mine said it, I'm grateful that we're returning to the ordinary. Okay? Not going to be like it was, but it's nice for it to just feel a little ordinary. So let's be in a spirit of prayer together. Oh, Beth. Um, I have no one, but in that, in so gratitude for uh, the children in our midst. So let's be in a spirit of prayer together. Let us pray. God, in strange and profound times and in ordinary times, you are with us. 2,000 years ago, you took the form of a, 
a little baby and came unto us in this world to teach us of radical love, unconditional welcome, and the hope of peace and joy and justice in our world, and the call of us as your people to be channels for that action and love. And so remind us of that this day. We give deep thanks um, for all who are here, for all who are watching at home, um, and we just ask you to be with us and to bless us, God, in this week ahead. Let all God's people say, Amen. And so at this time, we're going to receive our offering, and there's a little notice in the bulletin, but I wanted to emphasize it again that we do the offering, especially nowadays when a lot of people give by check or electronically or whatever. We still do it because we feel like it's an important ritual to remind us that just as God is generous to us, we are called to be generous to God as well. And so it's in that spirit that we receive this morning's offering.
Dear Lord, we have been anxiously awaiting your birth during this Advent season. You who will come to us as a baby, grow to be our teacher, and end up our Savior. We have been honoring the gifts of hope and peace and joy and love across this Advent season. May these gifts we bring today bring hope to those who feel hopeless, peace to those who find themselves in struggle, joy to those who find themselves feeling despair, and love to those who may feel alone. We humbly offer these gifts for you and for all God's people. Amen. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth, peace among those whom he favors.
also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was from the house and lineage of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been, put, who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, had stopped. They were overwhelmed with joy.
Please be seated. Wasn't that beautiful? Uh, benediction, and then uh, we'll sing our closing congregational song, and I invite all of you to come downstairs and to have some coffee and some snacks and, uh, and just to greet each other with joyful fellowship. So, a final prayer. God, send us off as your people into this week. Send us off as a people of the story. Send us off anticipating joy and hope and peace and love in our lives and in the life of this world. Let all God's Advent and Christmas people say, Amen. Amen.